Ever since we started this project, it's been a dream to film the best powder skiing episode ever. And after three years of waiting for the perfect storm to line up, it was finally here. Thank you for calling the Snowbird Mountain Report. It's 6 a.m. and we've received 22 inches of snow overnight, bringing our storm total to nine. Unfortunately, we booked these tickets to Minneapolis weeks ago, and United's change policy is a bitch. We are headed there to experience the Ski Challenge, the world's largest beer league. I always say, when it snows, we goes. I just didn't think that would mean to Minnesota. I think uh, the perfect day at Buck Hill, I always picture that crisp, clear day, zero degrees, bright sun, perfect corduroy, and not too many people around because it's zero degrees, but it's just nice, perfect race conditions, and uh, just get out there and rip some turns. This is Dave. He started skiing in college and fell in love with racing. To him and his wife, skiing is life. It just happens to be in the Midwest. Well, Ski Challenge started in 1985. It's a reason to ski in Minnesota, because there's not a lot to challenge you without a race. When you're out west, everybody is waiting for the powder day. So we don't have a lot of powder days here. We have a lot of cold days like today. The snow is a little different, but it's awesome for racing, so that's what we do. It's freezing, yet we have a ton of people out here just trying to go fast on skis in speed suits. I would say about 65% of the people wear GS suits, because you can't, you know, lose that tenth of a second. Okay, go ahead. 414 on blue. And then on red, we have 420, 420. Last I looked was eight degrees and probably what, about three below windshield? Friday afternoon. It's a great day to be out skiing. Rain drops like bullets on my friend's skin and securities I've had. I'm creeping. The skiing's not good here. These people have been out west, they know that, but they don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I need one more chance now the time for no, it's a bunch of ex-athletes, out of condition, wearing tight speed suits on a sub-zero day. We're into it. It's something to do. It's something to talk about. You know, you get done, you do two runs, you talk about the one turnover, the knoll that kicked your butt. And like I say, it's bowling a league on skis for us. I think it's just a great thing for the industry, for skiing, and we buy stuff. I got two pairs of GS skis and a couple pairs of slalom skis and two pairs of fat skis, and we're the largest market for speed suits, which, which would make sense. It's a refreshing culture change. It's all about just skiing and having fun. It's not about being cool. It's not about getting rad. There's just none of that. Ski challenge, mad made snow, blue skies, and you're not at work. Grandmas and grandpas having fun go. at Buck Hill. Okay. We still got it going Woo. on. <laughs> After the race, a big part of Ski Challenge is going to the bar, and I, I sometimes say it's 34 seconds of ski racing and three hours of talking smart about it in the bar. Welcome back, Pete. 4181 Silver, get better. And your fastest racer out there tonight, she had a 16.84 from the rookies, Jessica Felton, come on up. So when Marcus called me up and said, we're gonna come and do a return of the turn, 
I'm like, Marcus, dude, we turn, that's what we do here. It's all about the turn. So take away the powder days, the epic mountain views, and the $20 cheeseburgers. When you strip skiing down to the bare bones, why is it still fun? This fringe group of skiers in the Midwest may be living on the outside of the ski industry, but they're the ones who understand skiing at its core. From the biggest mountains to the smallest hills, we're all just making one turn at a time. Take chances. Yeah. Eat so pasta, smoke rasta. <laughs> <laughs> Ski pasta. <laughs> oh, I knuckled the shit out of it, dude. Market. Come on, Market. Fair